We're creating four Etsy farmhouse inspired dupes today. And people, when you type farmhouse decor in Etsy, there is a lot to choose from. But I got inspired by this little baby cow looking piece right here. And I thought we need to take a trip to Home Depot because we're gonna build our own everything. We're not just gonna stuff this into a frame. So we're gonna pick up some of this underlayment for $10.69. Look how big this piece is. We're gonna cut it down to size, okay? And we have to grab some trim and people, the cost of wood is a little ridiculous these days, but I love this thin lightweight trim piece here because we get eight foot of it and I ship a lot of things. So this doesn't add too much weight to my packages. Plus it's only $10.20. And keep in mind, Home Depot will cut your wood down for you if you don't have tools at home or want to cut them down yourself. I just clamped the underlayment down to a stable surface and then used my jigsaw to cut out my piece. I then went on a Canva and created a design with a little baby cow. When you're printing these types of designs, you can use regular paper if you want to just put it in a frame. If you plan on decoupaging it like I am, rice paper napkin gift wrap paper they will all work this is a piece of rice paper and i attached it around the edges to a regular size piece of printer paper it works really easy with double-sided tape i did not have any so i used regular tape and gently fold it over the edges i knew i was going to cut off anyway here's our little piece of underlayment that we cut if you want to use a dollar tree sign or just shove the little picture in a frame you go right ahead and if you need measurements for this, here you go. I do cut this a little bit bigger to size. I like creating my pieces like this because I am a decorative artist and I do sell pieces. Glass does not ship well for me. So this allows me the ability to decorate a frame completely how I want in my vision and use whatever extras I want and not worry about the glass breaking because it's decoupaged on here. Plus, I wanted to give you guys an idea for those of you that struggle with painting because a lot of you that watch my painting pieces, and I don't know if you noticed, but there's a little barn back there <laughs> and we're going to be doing some barn painting with spring. And I really wanted to give you guys an idea of how you can print something and make it look like you painted it and create your own frame and everything else. So I really got inspired by that little baby cow. <laughs> <laughs> which is why we have our little baby cow in this. And if you're over there like Brandy, I can't paint the barn. I can't digitally create the barn. No worries. I do have printable digital downloads for sale on my website that I create. I actually really love being able to have the ability to completely hand make the wood projects that I create and put whatever design I create on those pieces as well. For our medium for this video, we're gonna be using Deco Art Decoupage in the mat. And I'm gonna be sealing over this with the Glossy Mod Podge. I will tell you all this, I am not gonna recommend the rice paper that I use and here's why. It beautiful for large prints, but I do not care for it for the smaller prints. It really just doesn't, it's thicker than I would recommend when you're decoupaging something smaller. And what I mean by that is if you're cutting this down into little pieces, say you want to section something out, you end up having to go around the edges and sand it down. It's just raised up more than I would care for when I'm decoupaging something. But if you're covering a whole surface from edge to edge, I really love the end result of this rice paper. Just in case you're wondering, I am using a sponge to apply my decoupage and it is a dry sponge. And if you don't have a printer or want to use digital downloads, this idea can be used with Hobby Lobby paper, scrapbook paper, Dollar Tree calendars. You can take wood and create your own custom frame like I did here and just use the idea for whatever makes sense for your home or whatever project you're working on. And right here, I'm just going around the edge with a fan brush, kind of smooshing it in underneath of our rice paper making sure it's all sealed nice and tight once this is dry and that will vary depending on how much mod podge you use it could be 30 minutes it could be three hours it's time to attach our frame so we're gonna need to bring in the miter shears i would not recommend using these for a thicker piece of trim especially if you have hand strength issues or carpal tunnel but for a thin piece like this it's not too bad I do put this on a 45 degree angle and then I dual wield it with both hands as I pinch it. See me taking it off camera. <laughs> I gotta put it in just the right spot to be able to squeeze it on down to get that cut. Ta-da! <laughs> 
I then repeated the entire process around the whole board. I put the center, like the slanted center piece at the very edge of our picture. And then I measured at the very bottom for the same spot. And that's how I cut the 45 degree all the way around. You can use a miter saw or whatever is the easiest for you to cut this. I will also recommend for those of you that have carpal tunnel, wrap a hand towel around the edge of this or use a pair of cooking mitts. It's going to give you a better grip and it's going to be so much easier to squeeze the end of those miter shears tight and close. Like I said, I wouldn't recommend this for the larger trim, but this is pretty thin and I didn't have a rough time at all cutting this. Once I had all the pieces measured and in the spots I thought they fit great, I painted them up white before attaching them. And I'm gonna use my favorite type on wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. You can always come back and staple this in as you want on the back. I have not had a problem making these. I use underlayment all the time. I even create stain art with them. I have some videos with that stuff as well. Do be mindful of where you're putting your frame and be mindful of how you're holding your frame. I got a little bit, I don't know what the word is, handsy with this as I was looking at it and I dropped it and cracked the corner. So I had to take some wood glue in there and then I painted over it once it dried. It was fine. I can't tell that I made a boo-boo with it. We're now going to take some of my favorite clay and this Prima mold. You can use any mold you want. You do not have to use a Prima mold. Put a little bit of cornstarch up in there and then take your clay and mold whatever design you want. I'm going to kind of just do one of these little edges here in the section. I'm not even going to use the whole stripe piece, the whole strip, I should say. We're just doing one little section like this. And I made four of these because we're going to put right in the corners. If you don't want to do this part and your edges, your corners are perfectly fine, then don't even worry about it. But one, I wanted to add a little bit of something to this frame, just customize it a little bit more give you guys the idea, a little bit of inspiration. And two, if you don't want to do this, here's some other little tips for you. Use caulking, use spackling, and just shove in the edges of your corners if there's gaps. Let that dry. Now, if you want to sand it down, I do not recommend using caulking at all. You're going to want to use spackling. So put the spackling in the edges. It will seal up any of your gaps. Caulking does not sand well. I'm using wood glue on the back of here and I'm just kind of tapity tap 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 in it right in the corner around the edges. This is my favorite clay. It is an air dry clay. So I just let this sit 24 hours. <laughs> Whenever I use it, I gotta let it sit 24 hours. I'm sorry. Oh, it's such a tedious process, but I love using this clay. It always just allows me to make pieces a little bit more customizable. You can bring in your little clay tools and just kind of shape it to make more sense for whatever it is that you're doing. Here, I'm just kind of making sure that they sit in the corners and all look like they were actually attached to the frame instead of just kind of being plopped down on the top of it. Let this dry 24 hours and then you're ready for your finishing touches. Now I did want to show you guys that you can sand this. This is one of the reasons why I love this paper clay. Not all clay is created equal. Okay. And I do furniture art as well. So this is why I love this stuff you can sand this. Now this is a high grit sandpaper. I did that on purpose so you could actually see the stripes of the sandpaper and the clay. See how it's really working to sand it. So if you use a smooth piece of sandpaper, it's gonna be buttery smooth on your clay as well. For my finishing touches, I'm just taking and painting these white, letting them dry, and then I'm bringing in the crusty bit paintbrush. Brandy, what's a crusty bit paintbrush? Well, I'll tell you what it is, okay? It is one paintbrush that has been piling up and piling up <laughs> that you have not cleaned in a long time. And then we're gonna use that to distress because little did you know, it actually makes for a really nice way to distress your pieces. For this particular piece of decorative art, I didn't wanna go too heavy on the frame, so I kept it really minimal, just adding a little bit of that farmhouse feel in there. I did want this to look like a picture though. I did want it to look like I painted it on here. So I took some more white paint and just went into the frame 
around the picture itself to make it look like it's painted. And when I was happy with that, I put a little bit of that black and gray mixture on my finger and went over the little ornate designs in the corner. So let's take a look at our Etsy inspiration one last time. It's so funny the things we draw inspiration from and how this little baby cow inspired me to create this piece with this little baby cow. This Etsy dupe is gonna be a little bit more spot on. We're gonna literally create this piece and the only thing we're switching out is the pictures. We're gonna use farmhouse pictures. I printed these off my website. You can use whatever pictures you want. You could even do a reverse decoupage with real pictures if you want it for this piece. Now I use my rice paper and if you remember, I said I do not like using this to kind of cut and piece together. So I'm taking the larger of the pictures and I'm going to place them completely over the wood pieces that we're going to put them on. They did not completely cover, and I'm gonna show you in the reveal how you can see that there is a raised spot on the side. I wish that they completely cover, but once I got them to the point where I was cutting them down, I'm like, shoulda, woulda, cut it at this point. Hey, we're rolling on with it. I picked these pieces up from Hobby Lobby and I'm just gonna paint them white for the background. I'm keeping the wood themselves neutral. I am not sure if I'm gonna be selling these or not at my vendor space or if I want it to keep them. <laughs> so I did not want to actually paint or stain the wood just yet. So I left them completely neutral. I used my medium and I just decoupaged these suckers right on here. I made sure that the edges were all nice and tight. And once they dried, I took an 80 grit sandpaper and sanded around our edges. Now I did have a few little bubbles in here and let me show y'all how I handle this, okay? We're gonna just take a little Cricut tool, our little Cricut tool. You can use a pin if you don't have this, pin will work just fine. And we're gonna just pop it right on down. Press it easy, don't get wild and start wiggling it. You're just gonna go straight down so you touch the wood and then pull it right back out. And you just keep going around and popping all your little bubbles and then press it down with your finger or your thumb like I'm doing, and then put your sealer right over it and you'll have a nice flat surface. If you don't use the iron one method, this is a great way to get rid of bubbles. Remember I said I'm not fuzzy inside about using the iron on method with the printouts from the printer. Even with the parchment paper, I am scared that the ink is gonna pop up a bit. To create our square frames, I'm gonna use two different size little square dowels out of this multi-pack. Pick this up from Walmart, it's like five or six bucks. Hobby Lobby, Home Depot, and Lowe's all sell square dowels. So in the event that your Walmart doesn't have this pack, you can pick them up there. Walmart even has dowels and you get like a couple feet for a couple dollars. I use this multi-pack all the time. So I pick it up whenever I see it. My Walmart doesn't always have it. Just in case yours don't either, you now know where you can also get more. What you're currently witnessing is me winging the measurements. I did not actually measure this to size and I just cut and cut and cut until I got the size square that I was happy with that fit behind these little wood ovals. Now we're gonna bring in the stapler because <laughs> we had to bring the stapler in for this project. And the Gorilla Glue. I love this stuff. It sets in like 10 seconds. Not completely, not completely, but it starts working pretty quickly. So I put little dabs on the edges and then I held it in place and stapled. I made sure that this was facing the back of the shape that we were creating. And I did this for each corner, making sure that one piece of the staple was in one side and one piece of the staple was the other side. That was not the easiest thing. Don't let the video footage fool you. <laughs> it took some patience making sure that I had that stapler in there just right. I let that dry for about 10 minutes just to make sure that it was decently put together and then attached our little oval pieces. I did this by just using wood glue. I didn't add any clamps or anything. I put the wood glue where the oval met on the corners and kind of smooshed some more in between there once I was happy with the placement and I let this dry overnight. Now let's take a quick look at our Etsy dupe inspiration piece again. And now here's mine. 
And as I said, remember I would show you in the reveal that you can see around the edges how it's a little bit raised through the paint even where I tried to blend it. Still looks good, but it's not as good as if the rice paper would be slightly thinner. People, this is one of my favorite farmhouse pieces that I have ever made, and I absolutely love the bowl on this piece. It was back to the drawing board. We had to cut another piece of underlayment. I did it the same exact measurements as the last one. I painted it white. I made sure we had the trim, and I printed out a beautiful picture. Only this time, this one's pretty spot on, people. I was pretty proud of myself. Look at that little baby bull, super cute. I'm loving the little baby cows and the little baby bulls. I'm just really in love with them right now. I mean, I think it's a baby bull. Might be a grown ass bull, but it looks like a baby bull to me. Harley needs a friend. Harley needs a little cow to walk around the yard with. And if Wes had his way, we'd have some chickens. <laughs> Anyhow, moving on back to our picture. We're gonna decoupage this down just the same exact way as we did in the beginning with the first dupe or inspiration, I should say. You guys see them scissors right up there? If you haven't watched my last video where I talk about everybody in my house, someone has robbed me and my other scissors, <laughs> you see them, they're still there, right? No one has touched them. Threatening them <laughs> with going through their rooms has kept my craft scissors in my workspace. I cut the frame the same way, but only I swapped it around the opposite way. That's another reason I love that trim so much is because you don't have to just attach that with the small part in the middle. You can put the small part on the edge and completely get a different effect with the trim. To attach the pieces, I used the same exact technique, the wood glue and the hot glue. I did not staple the back. And now I'm going to heavily distress this piece with this black paint using my finger. Calm down, people. I know you were hoping the Krusty Bit paintbrush made another appearance, but you know, we only bring that out for special occasions, okay? Let's take a quick look at our Etsy inspiration. And here is mine. I'm sure you've probably seen a bunch of DIYs using the Dollar Tree glass candlesticks like this one, creating planters or candle holders. I have a little bit of a multi-purpose idea using a different Dollar Tree candlestick, this one in particular, and this little galvanized bucket or planter that I picked up from Christmas tree shops. This was just a dollar. If you don't have Christmas tree shops local to you, Dollar General and Dollar Tree both sell little buckets just like this. You're just gonna wanna make sure that it fits on top of the candle holder. You can spray paint these if you want. I painted both of them white. I made sure to not give full coverage on the galvanized bucket because I wanted it to look a little vintage. Once they were dry, I grabbed some of these transfers I picked up from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna take three of them because the little galvanized bucket has like these little diamonds in the center and I'm just going to put three right in the front section. Now the idea behind this for me is I wanted to use this for staging and I didn't want to kind of handcuff myself to just one way of using this by gluing the bottom. So I left it unattached. I made sure that it matched and that this planner piece fit perfectly inside the candle itself, the little candle holder, so it can be used as one planner or I can use it as two different pieces. And I thought you guys might like the little idea there too. So I thought that I would share that with you. I feel like that candlestick is kind of like a staple in the DIY community. We see it do so many things. And I was like, what about using a candle holder to create a interchangeable multi-purpose DIY? Now I am distressing this very heavily. You don't have to do that, obviously. You distress it how you want, but I wanted to make sure that mine was very heavy. It also helps to just bring out the raised spots in both pieces. Now let's check out our Etsy inspiration piece. And here's mine. 
I really love that I can use this as one piece or two. I didn't glue anything down so I can even switch out the florals. This will just continue to match with whatever I'm staging it with. As always, people, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. You know I appreciate you. And if you're looking for more entertainment and some farmhouse type inspiration, I'll post this DIY thrift flip video right here for you to check out. And until next time, bye!